everybody. In this society, it's a two-tier society. People with good credit, people with bad credit. They got something for you if you got bad credit, but you're going to have to pay more for what you get, okay? And that's the way it is all the way through. They got something for the nice people, and they got something for the bad people. We know the people are not really bad. Okay. <laughs>
big way. These, these are things that you're putting out. It's going to come back to us? It's going to come back to you, then you're going to bring to me, okay. and we're going to go over your report. All right. Okay. 30% of your credit score is dependent upon your outstanding balance. If you have a credit card with a limit of $1,000, if you keep your expenditures on your card, your utilization down to $299, you're going to have a high score, okay? 35% is your payment history. And, you know, if you have late payments and collections, okay? Things that does not affect your credit score, your education. It lives at the, the years you live at one location. How much money you make. Late payments that are less than 30 days. If you have a payment and you pay it on the 29th, that doesn't go on your credit uh, report, then some things don't even go on your credit report at all, like utilities. Uh, your, your utilities only go on there if, you, if they take you to collections to pay, and they will, if you goof off with them for more than a, a year or so. Child support or alimony, unless they take you to court, uh, take you to the credit bureau. Okay. Your race, religion, or your gender orientation. Bounce checks, unless it goes to the check collections place, and you never pay it, you never pay it, and they decide to put it on your credit report. Okay. Your age, your occupation, your interest charge, how much your interest rate is, and then queries from your employer. employer or renters. Those are called costly queries. They don't work your score. Okay, today we're going to go through four lessons. Your true score. Um, do you guys you mind repeating this one real quick? We did it last time. We're going to do it again. We're going to go through the lesson called ideal number. We're going to tell you about the 30% rule. And we're going to tell you about the credit card limit. June 14th, we're going to tell you about installment loans. We're going to tell you about high priority negative items on your account. You don't need to dispute everything. If the credit bureau feels like you are giving them a frivolous letters and taking them, asking them to take off stuff that they're not supposed to take off, they can ignore you all the way. So that's why I don't want you guys to jump in here to the game. Okay? That's why you have to be careful about these credit repair places that just try to take everything off your credit and just come back on. Okay? Um, negotiate your collections. There are certain things you need to say and do. We're going to have Lexington to do that on your behalf. But we're going to counsel you first so you can tell Lexington what you want done. You got to direct your <coughs> Professionals that work with you, you got to direct your account, you got to direct your lawyer. You got to know what's good and bad, what you need to do. This is what we're teaching you now. Um, designing for the future that tells you about how to keep your credit together. Then there's um, four other or five other topics that we're going to let you pursue on your own. We will start any dispute process where needed through Lexington Law. So you won't have to write letters or anything. We're going to have those letters written from, for you on your behalf from Lexington Law. They have a special relationship with the credit bureaus and a lot of the credit collectors, and they'll be able to do a superior job. But we've got to tell them what we want to do and what we don't. The final lesson you will do on a self study basis at home. Before graduation, we will do a final micro, my FICO credit report to determine what progress you have made in regard to improving your credit score. In order to be a successful farmer, you must have access to capital. The spend approach to farming reduces the amount of capital you need, but there's things you have to buy that will not that you will not have enough time to save for. We already talked about that. Okay, now let's go to the first lesson. We're gonna okay, what was the first lesson? Can anybody tell me about the first lesson? We did two 